On this trip, I will be traveling to the hilly landscape on the eastern side of Castelo Branco district to try a hunt on red deer. I received permission to film this hunt under a couple of conditions. First, I'm not allowed to share the exact location of the hunting grounds. The second condition was to not show footage of animals getting hit by my arrows or to display my harvest. It's a three hour drive to the hunting lodge and it was well after dark when we arrived. I am traveling with my family and the owner of the lodge was kind enough to provide an extra bed for our three-year-old son. I scheduled to meet with the guide at 6.30 am and since we were all tired of the long drive we just settled in for an early night. It's 6 am. I'll go now and meet up with the guide and then we'll proceed and go to the, to the field and try an approach on red deer. Let's see, how, let's see how this goes. After a quick cup of coffee, I was on the road with the guide. The hunting grounds are a couple of kilometers away from the hunting lodge. I filmed this whole video with my cell phone. And being both hunter and camera guy is quite a challenge. Once we entered the hunting grounds, we immediately started seeing red deer. When we were certain we were past the legal distance to the main road, we stopped the truck to go after Hind, but she ran as soon as I opened the door. It's difficult to get within range of bow and arrow while moving out of a truck and without much cover, so we decided to try a bait and wait approach. I hid inside the ruin while my guide dropped some bait on the outside. Now it's just a waiting game. I didn't have to wait long. After just 10 minutes, I spotted the first hind. She was guiding her parcel through the open field, towards the safety of the forest on the limits of the reservation. They were passing at a distance of over 200 meters, completely outside my bow range. I would just have to wait for another parcel to come by closer and take the bait. Other parcels kept coming through the same route, and even though they are outside of range, it's still fun just watching them. We chose this location because it's on the trail the deer used to return to their bedding area in the woods. The reservation workers maintain some feeders across the hunting grounds, and during the night, both deer and wild boar come out of the woodland to graze and feed on the corn that has been stocked. Then during the morning hours, they return to the safety of the woods where they feel less exposed. About an hour after we had laid the ambush, a hind came in leading her parcel, just short of 100 meters from the ruin. There were no fawns on this parcel, which means I could take a shot if one of the hinds came within bow distance. 
they weren't showing interest in debate, however, and since the rut was over, calling them was out of the question. You can see the yellow lion on the ground, that, that's the bait my guide let out. I was so focused on the hinds, that I nearly missed the young stack coming in behind them. They didn't seem to notice the bait, however, and like all the other parcels, they proceeded towards the woods. Finally, at around 9am, roughly 2 hours after I started the ambush, a parcel came in short of 30 meters from the ruin. One of these hinds approached the ruin. She was at about 20 meters from where I was standing, and I could see her full profile. It was the perfect position to place the arrow, so I did, and missed. You are probably wondering how do you miss from 20 meters away? Well, like this. The bowstring caught on my arm and sent the arrow flying sideways. A perfect mixture of bad form and poor release. I called up the guy to come and pick me up. There's no point in laying in ambush after a missed shot. We took another drive around the reservation in hope of finding another parcel or a lonely stag that would allow us to approach and get within arrow distance. It was getting pretty late in the morning and most of the deer would have already moved on to the woodland. We decided to go back to the place where I missed the shot and try and recover my arrow. We did recover it, and it was usable. We noticed some movement about 200 meters away from us. It was another parcel moving closer to the woodland. We decided to try an approach around the hill, but once we managed to go around the hill, they were gone. After this, the morning hunt was over. It was time to go back to the lodge and discuss possibilities for a night ambush. However, on the way back, we came across another group of hunters. They were about to start a monteria. This is a hunting method where hunters are placed along a predefined path with shooting windows. Then, a pack of dogs chases wild animals through that path and the hunters can shoot whenever the animals pass along their window. This also meant that the place we had planned for the night ambush would not be viable. Okay, so it's 6 and a half a.m. of the second day. And the owner told me of a spot I could use to ambush. Probably some red deer coming back to the, to the forest. So we're gonna try that. I had to drive here myself. That's why I couldn't show you road footage. There is no problem with the video. It was so dark my cell phone couldn't pick up an image. The green patches you can see on the screen are the leaves in front of me illuminated by the green laser I have on my bow. After half an hour, there's enough light to film. I'm laying an ambush on a trail used by deer. I came to survey this place on the previous day with the owner of the reservation, and we saw some fresh deer tracks crossing the dirt road. At this time, the deer should be coming from the fields on the right to the woods on the left. Although I was getting pretty decent cover from the foliage in front of me, I felt a bit exposed from my right flank, so I decided to change position in order to get better cover from all angles. I feel a bit more secure on this position. I have better coverage from all angles. I am also closer to where the deer should come through, which should provide me with a better shot opportunity. At 8 a.m. I finally saw some movement, close to the top of the furthest hill in front of me. There was a deer browsing around the bushes and trees on the slope. Unfortunately, I couldn't try to approach it, since it was outside the reservation area. Another hind passed running along the top of the nearest ridge. It didn't give me enough time to get the phone out. That was the last deer I saw on this hunt. At 9 a.m. I decided to call it over. It was time to go back to the lodge to my family and drive home. Going back empty-handed is kind of a bittersweet sensation. On the one hand, I was really looking forward to fill my freezer with venison for a couple of months. On the other hand, 
I did get the opportunity to see a lot of deer from up close, all while enjoying the outdoors. During this trip, we took time to visit two historical villages around this area, Idenha Velha and Monsanto, where HBO was filming House of the Dragon, the prequel to Game of Thrones. We made a video of that visit, which should be coming up at the same time as this one. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked the video. We have recently acquired a new camera that's capable of filming infrared light. I will be using that to film night ambushes. If you enjoy our type of content, the best way to stay updated is to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Before we left the reservation, my wife took a wide scenery shot that I really wanted to end the video with. And so here it is. I hope you enjoy.